SCP-111, titled The Dragon Snails, is a beloved SCP article from 2012 written by user Adam Henderson, but not many understand why it is an important SCP entry in the history of the wiki and in containment fiction as a whole. In this video, we'll look at how and why that is. Like most SCPs, the current SCP-111 wasn't the first to occupy the numerical slot. For that, we must go back to edit this, the first wiki farm that housed the SCP series back in 2008. There, the first SCP-111 was given the name Quantum Destabilizer, a pretty typical title for that era of tryhard. Here's a screenshot of the first SCP-111 as it existed on Edit This. Also pretty typical of that era, the article was a bit lacking. It's described as a flux of objects, including a chair, a four-dimensional cube, three men, standing, and a gazelle. Unfortunately, the picture associated with this early SCP-111 entry is not archived, and I have to wonder what the hell it might have looked like. Something important to understand to this video is that in the early days of SCP, an image was usually the starting point for an entry, with the prose built to fit the existing image, though not all articles were built around images. So what this could have been is anyone's guess. Luckily, we now have the power of AI art. So here's an AI art interpretation of that description. The original SCP-111 would make its way to Wikidot, the wiki farm that the SCP series currently exists on to this day. Although the comments section for this early page is not archived, the discussion page from the edit this has been saved, and we can see the article didn't receive a stellar reception. Here we see the anonymous author using the excuse of being half awake, a fairly common self-defense when it came to SCP writing on 4chan's paranormal board X. Hell, even Moto42, the author of the original SCP-173, played that card. Despite the article not being very well received, it persisted on the wiki dot from the years 2008 to 2012. Over that time, its rating increased a bit. There were not a lot of upvotes back in those days, so this was not really as much of a meager rating as it may seem to modern eyes, but it wasn't a success either. As the format, writers, and audience matured in the new style, the original SCP-111's rating gradually dropped. While in the early days nearly any entry was welcomed, by 2012, several thousand SCPs had been written, and relics of an older, simpler time were not taken kindly to. When the initial SCP-111 finally entered deletion range in 2012, the slot was made available, with a new hybrid anomaly of separate objects. Bolstered by the larger audience size and voting population, the new and improved SCP-111 rocketed to a safe and solid rating. By October, Dragon Snails had become a small community celebration. Everybody wanted their own Dragon Snail. The success was in no small part due to the article's image, two convincing creatures that fit the prose exactly, almost too cute to believe. This was clearly an article written in the original style and tailor fit to a pre-existing image. But what was that image? This was before a culture of attribution and transparency regarding pictures existed on the SCP wiki and commenters were left asking or searching it out themselves. In October, a user happened upon the image and discovered something shocking. The image, and indeed the entire article, had been based on a copyrighted photo of real-life sculptures created by DeviantArt user Airwolf Creations, first published in 2009. Again, that wasn't too atypical for the SCP wiki at the time. Plenty of articles were built around copyrighted images that did not belong to the author and that the author had no permission for, especially photos of sculptures. Take this famous image of a beluga whale carcass, for example. It's a relic of the early internet existing as far back as 2006 on a live journal entry and made its rounds on paranormal boards far before it was included in SCP-682. No, the shocking part was what the original artist had to say about their work being used for an SCP without their permission. It reads, I am aware that this picture was used for an article on the SCP Foundation. Thank you to the commenters who let me know. Unfortunately, the writer of that article did not ask for my permission, and he even took the time to crop out my watermark from the photo. It saddens me that a fellow creative could not be bothered to respect my work, and even took pains to remove my name from my own creation. And this is true. If you look at the original photo next to the one used on the SCP article, you can see the author's watermark in the top corner has been removed entirely and deliberately. 
Now we should extend a modicum of grace to the author of SCP-111, because removing watermarks was not only normative for the SCP Wiki's culture at the time, but it was encouraged for the sake of realism and immersion. We can see an example of this common practice within the edit history of SCP-804. This was true of many, many other early SCP articles, such as SCP-593, which initially had a copyright and watermarked image. This image was cropped with permission from a staff member, though it was later removed completely, but again was reposted with permission from the copyright owner. Fun fact, at the time of this video, April 2023, SCP-593's image remains with this copyright watermark down its right side. The authors of the SCP Wiki had done this countless times before collectively addressing the legal or moral issues in doing so, a problem that was already a genie out of the bottle, but would be mitigated and addressed more aggressively almost a decade later by site-wide sanitation efforts from the licensing team. This effort, mainly conducted circa 2020, has resulted in most copyright images being removed from the site, either replaced with a Creative Commons image or not replaced at all. You can almost go to any Series 1 or 2 SCP article, look in the edit history of the page, and see a note somewhere from 2014 to 2020 about the image being removed or changed to be Creative Commons compliant. Notable examples include a large number of articles, some of them famous and classics, such as SCP-106, SCP-682, SCP-914, and even SCP-173, though oddly not SCP-593, nor the numerous copyright stock images still present in SCP-009J. Even stranger, when this apparent oversight was addressed in a recent town hall, and after a large amount of attention and fanfare was given to the removal of SCP-173's image, a staff representative hand-waved the existence of copyrighted images on SCP-009J, saying that they would get to it at some later date. What can one say, but... Back to the artist responsible for dragon snails, they go on to write, At this point, I don't even know what to do about it, as Wikidot makes you jump through hoops to create an account just to flag a page or post in the forums or contact the article creator. Sigh. I'd be satisfied if there were a link to my website or even the image here on DeviantArt if that's where he got it. The irony here is that permission would have been happily granted, if respectfully requested, with the caveat of credit being given, at least in the discussion page, if not on the article itself. The SCP Wiki staff recognized how much the intellectual property theft bothered the original artist and wondered if they could be subject to some sort of legal consequences. The artist was immediately contacted. A discussion was made on the O5 command on Wikidot, the SCP staff's separate forum for public discussions pertinent to running and managing the site. Here, users questioned common practices of cropping out watermarks and even using unpermissioned images in the first place. The decision was reached to remove the image in good faith at least until discussions could occur with the original artist. A few days later, the original artist responded. An agreement was reached that the image could stay on the site despite being pirated and despite not being Creative Commons compliant due to the artist's belated, albeit begrudging, permission. Sounds familiar? Anyway, the artist wrote, I am willing to forgive and allow the image to be used so long as the author of the article and the SCP authors in general are made aware of that if they did not create a work of art themselves, that they must obtain permission from the artist and give attribution if the artist wishes it. My art is my livelihood. Now given the proper permission, the image was restored to SCP-111 with credit given where it was due. The staff even folded the artist's real name in-universe to provide proper attribution and uninterrupted immersion, something still important to the site in those days, but I digress. In the wake of the event, the staff took it upon themselves to address the issues it brought out. This was a major turning point for the site and represents the maturing of the community into legal and moral awareness of their past, current, and future actions. Writing SCPs would never be the same. The old way was dead. The appetite for change was initially pretty timid, discouraging the use of copyright images, encouraging, as opposed to requiring, Creative Commons compliant images, opening easier contact lanes, and responding to issues as they came up. Generally, the vibe was, I don't think we need to panic about every image on the site. Soon, discussions were held and policies were drafted for the use of an official image policy. For those of you paying close attention, 
Yes, the same person posting this picture discussion is also the same who gave permission to crop out a watermark nine months earlier. As the SCP Wiki staff grappled with their newfound moral and legal responsibilities, the gravity of the Dragon Snail's implications slowly but surely bent the discussion to what was aptly called the elephant in the room, SCP-173. Like the larger attitude towards image attribution and compliance at that time, the first steps were meek and mild. Licensing information was added to SCP-173's picture caption, with subsequent tweaks clarifying statements. The slow dawn of an angry sun they had been sheltered from prior to dragon snails. Eventually, the discussion and concerns would motivate the staff to reach out to Izumi Kato, the creator of the sculpture that would become, inappropriately it was now admitted, as SCP-173. But the story of how the SCP Wiki staff came into contact with Izumi Kato and what ultimately happened to result in the removal of the famous SCP-173 image is a story for another time. Suffice it to say, it has numerous overlaps with our current story. The Dragon Snail's image was ultimately removed in 2019. In October 2019, six years after the initial identification of the Dragon Snail's image and its jilted creator, a staff member wrote in the discussion of SCP-111. Posting here for clarity, the image has been removed due to the author not releasing their sculptures under Creative Commons. To avoid any futures issues arising from SCP-related content, the licensing team has decided to remove this image to respect the original creator's wishes. Anyone who wishes to continue viewing the Dragon Snails are free to go onto Aaron Metcalf's website to do so. In February 2022, a new image was added. This depicts creatures similar to the original Dragon Snails, but are not the sculptures created by Aaron Metcalf. This was a look-alike tribute that a site member created though there is no discussion post clarifying the change or how the image was made. This one was released as Creative Commons and so allowed to be on the site according to the new culture that the original image had helped usher in. A co-author of the image is listed Ian Hubert, who according to Google is a visual graphics artist who works with Blender, though I'm not sure if this is the same person or merely a coincidence. The storyteller in me wishes that the Dragon Snails events represented an about face for the SCP wiki and that it never had to deal with image piracy and looming legal fallout ever again. But that is not true. A very similar sequence of events occurred again for SCP-1926, also known as The Mutes, itself posted during the unfolding of the Dragon Snails events in March 28, 2013. It's piracy not coming to light until 2015 and similarly not completely dealt with until circa 2020. Another very similar image piracy fallout and correspondence took place with SCP-1471, also known as Mal-O. This piracy was also recognized in 2015, but not dealt with in the same definitive fashion as The Mutes, Dragon Snails, or SCP-173, because that image was more or less assumed to be released as Creative Commons since the creator couldn't be directly reached. Yes, that's right. The SCP Wiki staff decided without definitive or explicit clarity that the image was released as Creative Commons. Each of these incidents is worthy of episodes themselves, but we will let those stories wait until it is their turn. Because of SCP-111, an official image policy was created and rolled out in November 2013, directly following the dispute's resolution. In January the next year, an official and dedicated licensing team was formed and made operational, and whose near-daily task, certainly the majority of what they did, was to give legal notices on behalf of Izumi Kato for commercial uses of SCP-173's image and likeness, honoring their agreement with him and serving penance for the moral and legal wrongs committed against him in the name of SCP, this coming only months after staff had dismissed the task as not their responsibility and not their problem. Indeed, in the first year of sending out such copyright violation notices, records show that SCP-173 is mentioned 60 times. The event was a legal and cultural turning point for the SCP Wiki, and represented the beginning of a lasting judicial awareness regarding the site's content. It was a point of no return, and would slowly expand over the coming years to be the most primary and thorough consideration on the site, from SCP-173's image removal to the refusal to service AI-generated art, the site taking the path of least legal regret. While these things likely would have unfolded with or without SCP-111, as it stands, none of it would without it. As for Adam Henderson, the author of SCP-111, 
There is no real further record of interaction or communication on the SCP wiki after the events of the Dragon Snails unfolded in October 2013. He was sent a PM during the events by a then moderator of the site, encouraging him to make contact with the original Dragon Snails artist, but no reply was received, or if it was, it wasn't posted or shared to public knowledge. His profile activity records a brief return in September, both with a sandbox update and a comment, indicating that he may have read this PM but never again commented on SCP-111. It seems though, for all intents and purposes, Adam Henderson walked in, changed the site forever, and rode off into the sunset, either none the wiser or with the conclusion that it was best to be moving along. So there you go, SCP-111, and why some articles might be more important than what initially meets the eye, as the licensing team, certainly the most technically demanding, the most daunting in scope, and the most politically unforgiving of jobs in the SCP wiki staff structure, continues to march across the wiki with incompressible force and increasing authority. It's fun and a little bit funny to keep in mind that all of this, a four-year cycle of nearly identical copyright infringement cases, was started by the slow burn of a dragon snail.